You know it. You've heard it. It shows up in discussions of launch vehicles, in comparison of them, and in charts all over the place. It's also kind of a useless metric, as the title suggests. Dollars per kilogram. I couldn't think of another way to introduce this, I'm sorry. So, when we discuss launch vehicles, people love discussing the cost of them. Things of like cost of access to orbit, cadence, cost of access to orbit, dollars per kilogram. It shows up all the time. And, well, dollars per kilogram actually isn't that great of a metric when you actually look at it. And since I couldn't think of a good transition, we must first discuss what dollars per kilogram actually is and means before we figure out why it's misleading. Okay, so what is dollars per kilogram? I'm gonna keep repeating it. It's gonna sear into your head. Okay, so I am a, I am a satellite customer. I have a satellite. This is my satellite and I wanna launch it into an orbit. And I'm looking at all the different launch providers and all the launch providers have a rocket that can carry a certain payload to the orbit for a certain price. And that, and that is, so you get, so say it with me. So the price is I'm gonna buy a launch and it costs a dollars and it's gonna carry kilograms. The rocket has a certain capacity to that orbit, kilograms. So you divide that out, you get dollars per kilogram. It's pretty much, if I have one kilogram of payload, how much does it cost me to send that up on that rocket? Now, dollars, price, how do you get that? Now, I wanna make a big clarification here because everyone loves screwing this up and they misconstrue the words. Price and cost are different things. If I'm the launch customer, so I am buying a rocket launch, the price is what the rocket company quotes the rocket as. And when I write this down on, when they make a bill for that price, and you know, plus tip of course, and that's how much it costs me, the customer, because I'm buying a launch. But for the launch provider, price is different than cost. Price is the cost plus profit, because the rocket company wants to make money. This is a pure, we're assuming a very capitalistic uh, mindset here, okay? So, rocket costs. How much does a rocket actually cost anyway? And this is complicated, so I went over to my whiteboard to explain this. Take it away, me. Thanks, me. Launch costs are very, 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 very complicated things to figure out. I've done an oversimplification of them. Your launch costs can be broken down into two broad categories. Annual costs and launch-specific costs. So launch-specific costs are the costs you incur only because you're launching the rocket. That's the rocket itself. The engines, the propellants, the guidance systems, launch licensing, launch fees, pad repairs, pad fees, transportation costs to get things around. These are, these are entirely dependent on how often you launch. But rockets don't grow on trees and launch themselves. It still costs money if they did. So you have annual costs. You need to build and design and operate your rocket from somewhere, a facility, offices, a factory, those facilities and offices cost money. You gotta grease the local politicians to get tax breaks. You need factory workers, machinists, technicians, quality control people, janitors, engineers, IT people, people to protect you from the IT people, lawyers, HR, accountants, CEOs, social media people. All these people need to work in an office setting and a factory. That costs money. And that will cost money no matter what you do. These are annual costs. If you don't launch, you're still spending this money. It's pretty simple, right? It's not, but we're pretending it is. So I've come up with a cute little equation to describe this. Dollars, your cost, equals your annual cost, plus X, that's cadence, flights per year. People love talking about that one too, times your launch specific costs, because you'll only incur those when you launch divided by the number of launches per year. And I know what you're saying, hey, you suck at algebra, A over X plus L. Well, guess what? I'm doing it this way, you can't stop me. Now, before we keep going, I wanna emphasize a few things here. This is an oversimplification, okay? Very oversimplified. You have R&D costs that you have to amortize. You have to actually develop and build this rocket. That costs money, okay? 
uh, you have it, like interest rates and other businessy things related to loans and development costs. Insurance costs money. Uh, if you have a launch failure or launch delay, that's going to factor in here somewhere. And also there's your launch specific costs should decrease as you go because of a, what's called a learning curve. And the easiest way to describe a learning curve is, well, the first time you drive a car, ride a bike, rob a bank, or you have to fix your lawnmower, your push mower, because the fuel filter, which is built inside around the motor, I guess, uh, clogs if it sits too long. So you have to open the thing up, make sure it, and you wiggle the, the little thing out. You think you break it, and you gotta clean the little thing out, put it back together knowing full well, in a year you'll be right back here doing it. What I'm saying is, the first time you do it's the hardest, it, it gets easier as you go. Your first launch, which hopefully isn't your last, is gonna cost a lot more than your last launch, even if it's the second one. As you launch more, you're gonna optimize and things will go a lot better for you, hopefully. And your annual costs are dependent on cadence. Now, obviously the specifics are factory, like industrial engineering and launch configuration specific, but if you're launching once per year, your annual costs will be a lot different than if you're flying 10 or 100 times per year. That's just, it's the truth. That doesn't, you gotta factor that in here somewhere. Now, let's do a quick uh, thing to demonstrate something that's important. Let's say your annual costs are 10. Your launch specific costs are 10. If you launch once per year, your rocket costs 20. If you launch twice per year, 10 plus 20, that's 30, divided by two is 15. Now I've made a nice little chart here that shows your costs will decrease the more you fly. Cadence is king. Now, the other caveat here, because someone's gonna bring this up, we're assuming a purely commercial launch market and not you launching your own payloads most of the time. Internal launches for your own payload, they factor into this somehow, but that's, that's different. That muddies the water, so we're not gonna talk about it. We're assuming purely commercial. You're not doing anything else. You're just building rocket and launching it, okay? You're assuming that. Also, this means that your rocket price will decrease the more you fly. Now, even if you were to launch every day and no, no maintenance, nothing else, you, your rocket will still cost money. You will bottom out somewhere because there's no such thing as free launch. We're not gonna work with that. The, the number I've heard is somewhere like $400 per kilogram, okay? And how companies set their costs is internal, involves business people, which you, because obviously you have to set something because customers aren't gonna like it if you start pricing based on how many customers you think you'll get a certain year. And as a quick note, most launches are scheduled about two years in advance. Well, back to you, me. Thanks, me. Now, kilograms to a certain orbit. That requires ex explanation of orbital mechanics, launch systems, and how all that works together. So I, well, uh, back, back to the whiteboard. I'm not doing that. Wow, me, that was very interesting and very exciting. Now, when we talk about payload capacity to orbit, you know, mass to orbit, which, oh, that's another metric, Usually we're talking about a specific orbit, generic. Uh, for, for example, a launch vehicle that launched out of uh, Cape Canaveral, they'll probably say our payload capacity is to a 185 nautical mile orbit, 28 and a half degrees orbital inclination. inclination. So they launch straight out east out of the Cape. In reality, that's to a very low orbit. Your launch vehicle is never launching at full capacity because, you know, your propellant margins, the weather might, you know, be working against you. Expect the best, plan for the worst. And the payload capacity to certain orbits depends on your rocket and depends on a bunch of different factors. I'm not gonna keep explaining that. So dollars per kilogram, we've got dollars per kilogram, what, what gives? Okay, so let's say I'm launching my satellite and it weighs 100 kilograms and I have two options for launch vehicles. Rocket Lab's Electron and SpaceX's Falcon 9. Those are pretty prominent commercial launch vehicles, okay. So let's compare prices. Okay, so Electron's dollars per kilogram is like $25,000 per kilogram. That's pretty, that's pretty up there. But Falcon 9 
is like $4,000 per kilogram. What do you think I'm going to use? I'm getting Falcon 9 until I see the price tag. And it's what? $67 million. Gadzooks, what's going on here? Dollars per kilogram. Look, I even made the chart. Oh, wait, I lied. See this chart? Uh, this is dollars per kilogram versus gross liftoff weight. Hey, that's weird. And this is the chart for dollars per kilogram for payload to low Earth orbit, or the generic low Earth orbit. Isn't that interesting? You'll notice something. Dollars per kilogram basically only correlates to gross liftoff weight and payload capacity. See, the problem is, Rocket Lab's electron carries like 300 to 320 kilograms to low Earth orbit. It only costs seven and a half million dollars per launch. Falcon 9 carries 22 and a half metric tons to low Earth orbit expendable at 67 million dollars per launch. You see, you're not buying a kilogram of launch. We're excluding rideshare because that's weird and communism, so we're, ex we're ignoring that for right now. You're buying an actual full launch. You can't buy a part of a launch. Again, no rideshare. You're buying the full launch. These charts show you that if you buy a full launch, you're getting the more bang for your buck from a larger launch vehicle. But if your satellite weighs 100 kilograms, you're not going with a 22 metric ton launcher. You're going with a 300 kilogram launcher. Assuming you're not shooting to like Saturn or something. Dollars per kilogram is a great way of showing one thing. Scalability. Launch vehicles that are larger scale better. This is true for a lot of things. Larger things, generally speaking, scale better. So actually, I came up with a name for this the first time I recorded it. I call this the scaling fallacy. Again, larger launch vehicles scale better. They're so when I say this, right, we talked about, you know, annual costs. Well, just because the launch vehicle is 10 times the size of a smaller one doesn't mean it costs 10 times as much to launch. Right? It doesn't need 10 times the staff or 10 times the facilities. It might need five times the facilities. It scales better. See? So it's, and again, you're, you still have to buy the full vehicle. It still costs, again, a Cessna costs, I don't know how much, like $50,000? I don't know. And a 747 costs like 200 million because 747s are larger and more complicated than Cessnas. See? That's, that's why dollars per kilogram is kind of useless. And getting back to orbits. Remember, you're launching to a specific orbit. Your rocket's capabilities do matter. Can the rocket you're ordering actually do the job you want it to? That's important. And does, it, does the launch company provide the services that you need for your spacecraft? For example, at the moment, only ULA's Atlas V can carry RTGs, radioactive payloads. I don't know why you'd be launching one commercially, but we'll ignore that for a second. I know Falcon Heavy is getting rated for it in the future, but if you're carrying an RTG, guess what? Only Atlas V can do it, I think. Or the CEOs, don't bully you on social media. That could be another problem. And the other thing here we keep forgetting is, my satellite costs money too. For example, there was a Falcon Heavy geostationary satellite launch from two or three years ago. I think it was Viasat 3. And the antenna didn't deploy properly. It didn't work. And the insurance was like $700 million. That spacecraft was about $700 million. That's a pretty penny. You gotta factor that into costs too. Turns out, even if you get free launch, spacecraft costs money. Everything costs money. Oh, and then why charts like this are misleading. Okay, so this one is a timeline. So it talks about Vanguard, a rocket that could carry like 10 pounds to low Earth orbit. So it's not gonna scale very good, and it's one of the first orbital launch vehicles ever built. I don't anticipate this thing to, ever, to be cost effective compared to something built now. It was built in 1958. Back then, computer was a job. I would hope that a modern launcher costs less. You have more advanced techniques. You know how these things work, including things like the space shuttle and Saturn V are also kind of misleading because Saturn V wasn't commercial and the shuttle is, well, the shuttle. And it guards Starship numbers and Falcon Heavy actually can't carry 63 metric tons to low Earth orbit. It's limited, but again, we're getting into the weeds on this. It's misleading because it's misleading because also you're comparing different size launchers, different capabilities. 
Dollars per kilogram is fun to play around with, but ultimately, there's more to it than just that. Who knew this highly technical field was very complicated? Huh. Shocking.